What's up guys and welcome to this little overview for one of my favorite EQs in my collection. This is Brainworks Digital V3. My name is Nate Robenheimer and I'm going to quickly give you a little overview of this plugin. Um, it's a mastering grade equalizer. It's a digital EQ. Uh, features Brainworks proprietary mid-side routing. Um, it also comes in two different flavors. Uh, in the V3 version, namely the mastering version that you have here, um, and the mix version, uh, which you have on the side, yeah. Uh, so it is super flexible. I mean, I, it's always my first port of call for any mastering jobs I do. Um, it's also, uh, I use it quite a lot uh, on a per track basis as well, using the mix version, yeah. It's a great sounding EQ. I've got to commend them there. Um, especially in the highs, you can really kind of... Uh, push this quite far without sort of hearing any audible distortion. It's incredibly smooth sounding EQ, which I really love about this. Um, so let's uh, let's take a quick look. Uh, I'm not going to cover every single one of the controls, but like some of the basic operation and um, a few of my favorite features uh, available in this EQ. Um, first things first, I want to just mention this little um, visualization section here that you can hide the curves and... Uh, um, metering. Um, you can also uh, check out the correlation meter, which is a super handy little thing to have uh, built into the metering section here, yeah? simply because you are working uh, with the mid-side uh, encoding, so it's quite nice to be able to see that there are no phase problems happening in your um, in your audio. Uh, the other reason I like to be able to just get rid of this is a lot of the digital EQs nowadays, the fashion is kind of the sort of um, uh, curve that you can add sort of infinite nodes on and it's quite often very visual uh, style of EQing and I find quite often you kind of get caught up in EQing by looking at something and thinking that you're pushing the right so uh, right frequencies rather than actually listening to what you're doing. So I quite like to sometimes work with this off and um, Brainworks or V3 has some really really cool features for uh focusing on what you're actually working on, but with your ears, you know, to, to help you sort of really um, hear what you're actually doing to your audio. And uh, we're going to look at it now, yeah, in this middle section. Um, obviously, you have your gain in, gain out. Stereo width is a um, mixed dial between the mid-side, uh, when you're working in mid-side mode. So increasing that will increase the side um, uh volume um, to give it more stereo feel. You can switch it into a uh, stereo mode, so left and right, which can be worked on independently. We'll leave it in mid-side for now, but I want to take a look at this auto listen and auto solo functions. Um, this is incredibly handy when you're working. Um, auto solo, by having this turned on, any dial that you uh, modify on this side um, will automatically solo the mono section or solo the stereo section and uh, vice versa if you are working in left and right mode it will solo the left and right. I can just demonstrate that for you a track playing in the background um, and you'll hear as soon as you make any changes it's going completely mono that's because it's soloing this mono section and same goes for the stereo. So it really enables you to hear what you're doing to a specific part of the audio. And you can take this a step further by turning on the auto listen function. Um, over here you have some options where you can enable and disable various uh, elements that you are going to be using in the auto listen thing. And we can leave them all on the Q, F, uh, Q frequency and gain. Um, and listen what happens now. With the auto solo and the auto listen turned on, you when you change any functions here, you'll be getting a soloed section of that band that you are changing. So take a listen to this. So it makes it really easy to pinpoint frequencies that you might be looking for. Um, and yeah, it allows you to get your ears to just focus on those, which is, I find really handy. Um, you can also turn off the auto solo as well, and then this will be auto listening to the frequencies, but the stereo will still be playing at the same time, um, untouched. And vice versa. 
So yeah, that's a it's a great little function that um, I find that super handy. Let's take a look at some of the other features here. You've got low pass and uh, high pass filters up at the top. Um, a new envision, uh, version three. I don't believe you used to be able to set this before. The old ones is you have two different slopes now: a uh, twelve and a six dB slope. Uh, any of these functions can be linked as well to the other side um, individually um, so that you can work on both the mid and sides simultaneously. You have another cool feature here, the proportional cue that can be turned on and off um, for your bands. Um, proportional cue basically, if you're not aware, uh, when you boost a band You'd set your cue and you can boost like that and you'll see the the width of the cue pretty much remains the same. What happens when we turn on proportional cue is the more you boost, the narrower the cue will become and the more focused it is. And this kind of uh, prevents you from boosting too much, um, well especially when you have to pull something out quite far, it prevents too much volume um, change and it's more focused. Uh, you can fine-tune frequencies a little bit better like that and obviously you can then adjust it further um, by changing your cue so that's a super handy a little um, tool to have and I love the fact that you can switch between um, proportional cue and the standard uh, cue uh, as you might have noticed there we have a 12 dB range we can actually extend that I'm going to come to that in just a sec um, Another cool little feature is when you uh, reverse this, when you go past 12 dB, you'll see that the filter locks into a notch mode, which is also super handy to have. Um, and then you can adjust the cue for the notch filter there for really pulling out problem frequencies. Um, your EQ bands can be turned on and off here. And again, any of these buttons will link the left and right sides of the EQ so you can work simultaneously. Another fairly unique feature to this EQ is the bass and presence shift, um, which I also really like just for kind of shaping sounds. Uh, what this will do is it'll kind of keep them in, add or subtract bass, but keeping it slightly in proportion, kind of like a tilt shift EQ. Um, it'll add like a, a shelf um, to the bottom end and at the same time subtract from the higher mids. Um, keeping everything slightly more in balance and it's great for sort of just uh, shaping your sound a little bit. Um, you also have three different curves, uh, they are preset curves that you can select between. So if you go over to the little A here, yeah, you have the B curve which moves the um, the uh, slope a little further up the, the uh, frequency spectrum and C which will move even further, it's a slightly smoother curve in the lower end here as well. And this works in reverse as well, um, where you can boost mid and drop the bottom at the same time. And yeah, a really nice little tool that. And obviously you have the presence shift as well, which is very much the same thing, only operating in the higher bands. Once again, you can select between different slopes for the presence shift dial. We also have a dynamic EQ included, also really nice to have on an EQ like this. Um, you can set the frequency for the uh, the trigger frequency here, uh, which is also the um, the frequency that the dynamic EQ will be applied to. And as it triggers at that frequency, you can either subtract or um, add uh, EQ dynamically to that band or to that frequency. Uh, you can kind of hear what it's doing once you, once you have the solo on. We'll find a... So you can see it's it's, um, it's a bit soft, so you might have to boost this a little bit. Um, but you can kind of hear the the dynamic EQ kicking in there at that specific frequency. And then once you unsolo, it mixes back into the um, the uh, signal flow of the whole EQ. Um, now I want to just look at uh, this section here. Firstly, the, uh, the Monomaker, which is a super handy little tool as well, uh, which I use loads. It's present on a lot of uh, Brainworks' other plugins as well. 
Um, essentially what this does is it's, it has the same effect of adding a, a high pass filter, but only to the um, side of the, uh, of the audio. Uh, so basically anything underneath uh, whatever frequency you have set, just so everything underneath 75 hertz is forced into mono only. You can hear that as we sell this up. You have the mids only. As you pull it back, you can hear the stereo being uh, blended back in again. Um, working primarily in dance music for me, this is a super handy thing to have um, because the kick and the bass elements are so important uh, in that kind of music as well. I tend to force everything in the low ends into mono just to make sure that you have uh, complete compatibility and that everything sort of stays in place um, uh, and tight in the bottom end. It's a really handy little tool to have that just in 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 one uh, dial that you can just dial up and it's it's all sorted. Now, probably one of my favorite features in this EQ, which I haven't seen in any other EQs before, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, this gain scale dial, uh, which is really, really handy and can be used in some interesting ways as well. I'm going to dial in just some random... Um, We'll just link all of these. I'm just dialing some random curves uh, on our EQ. And I spoke earlier about having the range from uh, 0 to 12 dB range for the GAN. Uh, it, using this, you can actually extend it all the way to 24 um, if you have something at 12 dBs. By using the GAN scale, you can multiply the entire EQ curve um, whilst keeping everything proportional to one another, or every single band proportional to one another, um, which is really nice. It's uh, If you find that you've sort of happy with the EQ that you've done, but you want to maybe accentuate um, the sound of the EQ that you've currently got, um, but you don't want to have to do that now every single for every single band across, uh, especially if you've got... Um, things unlinked in this example where let's say you have different EQ settings for the mono and stereo sections. Using the gain scaling you can accentuate or or lessen the effect of the EQ all at the same time just by using the gain scale like this. Now another handy way to use this um, that I do quite often with the mix version, we're going to head over to the mix version quickly and take a look at that now. With the gain scaling, um, for example, uh, I don't have a, a vocal example up here now, but let's say, for example, we were working on a vocal and we wanted to uh, dial in a little bit of EQ. I'm just for the sake of um, for the sake of this demonstration, just adding a few curves here randomly and not actually listening to anything here. Let's take something out there. So we have. We have a bit of a uh, curve set up here, and this is our EQ for our vocal. If we have um, some masking in our track that needs taken care of, uh, say for instance a pad element or a guitar track or something that would be masking the vocal, what we can do is I'm going to add a new um, a new audio track, and let's just bring up the mixer. Uh, what I often do is once I've EQ'd the um, my primary track that I'm happy with the EQ and so on, um, we can grab the V3 mix and just make a copy of it onto the second track, which would contain our hypothetical guitar track or uh, pad track or whatever. And using the gain scale, we now have a duplicate copy of the EQ that we've set up for our vocal here. Using the gain scaling, we can actually gain scale negatively. And, and what that will do is uh, essentially any areas that we've pushed the vocals out here, it'll subtract and sort of create a negative curve or a negative copy of, of this curve that we have here. So this is great because you can really carve out a niche for specific sounds, um, but without having to do too much boosting on the one side you can just cut out the other side as well and it really kind of it's a massive help for sort of kind of creating more separation between sounds in your mixes 
So it's a really handy little feature to have that. Um, yeah, again, scaling for me, that's that's a really, really clever little feature to have built into the CQ. So anyways, I hope this has been helpful. Um, definitely go check this one out. It's a fantastic EQ, uh, very versatile and great little connection to your plugin library. And I highly recommend this one. Cool. Uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Cheers.